The prophet Joel chapter 2, verses 1 to 2 and 12 through 17. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sound the alarm on my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord is coming, it is near. A day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness. Like blackness spread upon the mountains, a great and powerful army comes. Their like has never been from of old nor will be again after them in ages to come. Yet even now, says the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. Rend your hearts and not your clothing. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. He relents from punishing. Who knows whether he will not turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him, a grain offering and a drink offering for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Sanctify a fast. Call a solemn assembly. Gather the people. Sanctify the congregation. Assemble the aged. Gather the children. Even infants at the breast, let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her canopy. Between the vestibule and the altar, let the priests The ministers of the Lord weep. Let them say, spare your people, O Lord, and do not make your heritage a mockery, a byword among the nations. Why should it be said among the peoples? Where is their God? Come thou fount of every blessing my heart to sing thy praise streams of mercy never cease call for songs of loudest praise teach me some melodious song sung by flaming tongues above praise a mountain fixed upon Mount of thy redeeming love Here I raise my Ebenezer Here by thy great help I've come And I hope by thy good pleasure Safely to join together either out loud or, or silently in our opening prayer. O God, maker of everything and judge of all that you have made, from the dust of the earth you have formed us, and from the dust of death you would raise us up. By the redemptive power of the cross, create in us clean hearts, put within us a new spirit, that we may repent of our sins and lead lives worthy of your calling, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
What we call the season of Lent, the six weeks before Easter, began as a 40-day time of fasting and repentance for people who were preparing to join the church, to be baptized and, and then join in communion. But it became more widespread as the church recognized that all believers need to fast and need to repent, and, and that the six weeks, the, the 40 days not counting Sundays before Easter is significant because at Easter and during Holy Week, just before, we celebrate what God has done in Jesus Christ. His death, washing away our sin and our shame, his resurrection, proving that even death is defeated, that life eternal with God awaits us. And, and so we spend these weeks in a time of repentance, a time of reflecting on where and how we may and may not have lived our lives fully the way God intends. To reflect on the times that we didn't act when we should have. The times that we did things we knew were wrong. It's not meant as a time to beat ourselves up, but rather as a time to do exactly what repentance is all about. To turn away from our selfishness, our sinfulness. To turn away from the things that draw us away from God. So why ashes? We begin our Lent journey today, Ash Wednesday. And when you read through the Bible, you'll only encounter the word ashes maybe 35 or, or 40 times and mostly in the Old Testament. And of course, some of those references speak to how to respectfully deal with the ashes of an offering. But, but the other uses are all pretty consistent. Ashes are used to represent our mourning and our sorrow and repentance. <clears throat> Job sits among the ashes when everything is taken away from him, when he's suffering physically, when he's suffering emotionally and spiritually. And later, when he's been complaining about his suffering, suffering that he's experiencing for no good reason, but only that sometimes terrible things happen to us, he complains to God and, and he says, in, in, in chapter 30, verse 19, God has cast me into the mire and I've become like dust and ashes. And when God has answered Job's complaints, when, when God has spoken of his majesty and, and, and God has spoken uh, about his creation and his sustaining us even when we suffer, Job repents. In chapter 42, verse 6, he says, Therefore I despise myself, and I repent in dust and ashes. Dust and ashes is an image of repentance. When we recognize our need for forgiveness, when we recognize our need for a Savior, when I acknowledge that I'm not God and I have sinned, that I am a sinner in need of God's grace, and so we begin the Lent journey on Ash Wednesday with words reflecting Genesis chapter 3, verse 19, from dust were ye made and to dust ye shall be. God formed Adam from the very dirt of the ground and it's a powerful image of God. God reaching down into the soil, getting dirt and mud up to the elbows, fingernails caked in the very stuff of creation, forming a person, shaping a human body with the creator's loving hands. I love that image. God getting his hands dirty. God reaching down into the creation and fashioning us, sculpting us, making us dirty hands and all. And, and I know that, that all of that is a metaphor because I, I don't think God has, you know, actual hands, but I also think it's an important image that God is hands-on with us. That God is willing and able to reach into the muck and the dirt of our lives to shape us and to hold us and to love us. That muck and dirt is our sin. It's our shame, our anger and hate and indifference, our selfishness. And God calls us to turn away from all of that. God reaches into that muck and dirt to rescue us. Psalm 40 is a favorite of mine. David says, I waited patiently for the Lord. He turned to me and heard my cry. He lifted me out of the slimy pit. Out of the mud and the mire, he set my feet on a rock and gave me a firm place to stand. He lifted me out of the slimy pit. 
He lifted me out of the mud, the dirt, the dust, the ashes. And so that's why we begin our Lent journey with ashes. It's a reminder of our mortality. It's a reminder of our sinfulness. It's a reminder of our need for a Savior, but it is also a reminder of God's might and God's grace and the forgiveness that God gave us at the cross. And so we come today to begin this season in dust and ashes. soul, are you weary and troubled? No light in the darkness you see. There's a light for a look at the Savior and life more abundant and free. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Full in his wonderful face, and the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Through death and to life everlasting he passed and we follow him there over us and no more have dominion for more than conquerors we are turn your eyes upon Jesus Look full in his wonderful face And the things of earth will grow strangely dim In the light of his glory and grace Psalm 51, the first 17 verses. This is a prayer of repentance. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love, according to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity, cleanse me from my sin, for I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against you, you alone have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight so that you are justified in your sentence and blameless when you pass judgment. Indeed, I was born guilty, a sinner, when my mother conceived me. You desire truth in the inward being. Therefore, teach me wisdom in my secret heart. Purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones that you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins. Blot out all of my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God. Then put a new and right spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation. And a willing spirit sustain in me. Then I will teach transgressors your ways, and sinners will return to you. Deliver me from bloodshed, O God, O God of my salvation. And my tongue will sing aloud of your deliverance. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise, for you have no delight in sacrifice. If I were to give a burnt offering, you would not be pleased. The sacrifice acceptable to God is a broken spirit. A broken and contrite heart, O oh God, you will not despise.
Just as I am without one plea But that thy blood was shed for me And that thou biddest me come to thee O Lamb of God, I come I Just as I am and waiting not to rid my soul of one dark blood to thee whose blood can cleanse each spot, O Lamb of God, I come, I come. Just as I 